Hey folks, Smitty here. Today we're going to be talking about the Traeger Ranger on Just Pillin' Barbecue. Stay tuned. Alright, now I've had this Traeger Ranger for a couple of weeks now, so this is not going to be an unboxing uh, review. Everybody's seen an unboxing by now, and if you don't know how to unbox something, well, this may be a little advanced for you already. So uh, we're going to skip the unboxing process, but I just think that a review is not really a good review uh, as far as the unboxing part goes, because that doesn't tell you how the, how the thing really works. And I wanted to use it a couple of times, uh, get to know the ins and outs of it, and be able to tell you how it really performs once you fire it up and get smoke rolling. So that's what we're going to do today. So the first thing I want you to know about the Traeger Ranger is it's bigger than it looks. I mean, I had seen them online, but when it got to me, uh, it was actually bigger than I thought it was going to be. I was always curious to see how much you could cook on it and how big it was, what kind of footprint it had and all that stuff. But it really is a little bit bigger than I thought it was going to be. Uh, and that's really a good thing. It's not too big that you can't load it in your trunk of your car or uh, the cab of your truck and take it camping, tailgating, whatever the case may be. Um, but I'm glad that it's not too small. That's what I was worried about. And it's really just the right size. So let's dig a little bit deeper. So before we go on the inside, let's talk about the outside for a minute. I love the finish of it. Uh, it's got the ribs on the top with the Traeger logo. Nice black color, which I like. The brushed handle, it stays cool, which I like. Um, you've got latches on both sides right here to latch down the lid. Uh, you can latch it down to help it retain the smoke as well. But also the big thing for me is latching it down so it's not flopping around uh, during transporting to a, a campsite or a tailgate party or anything like that. So one of the things that I really like about that is having these latches for this lid. There's venting uh, on the back as well as on the sides right here. Uh, that's how the smoke gets out. So you don't have to worry about any kind of smoke stack or anything like that. But it's louvered so that the holes are covered in case of rain going down into it. It can't do that because it's got little covers over all the slits in the side. I really like that as well. Um, and the controller. This is a new controller and I love it. Uh, temperature accuracy is is dead on the money. I mean, it, it's it's really good. It's accurate. It's steady. Um, it's really simple as far as the controls go. Once you get to know them, now you have to. I know one of these things where the the instruction manual usually goes in the trash, but this is one of the times where you're going to at least have to keep it until you get to know the controller. Um, but you change the temperatures up and down, obviously. Um, you can start it right there, or you, you start the uh, screen right there with the center button, and then you can control your temps up or down right there, and then that's your ignite button. Another cool feature that I like about it is the prime auger feature, which if you hold the ignite button and the up button at the same time for a minute, uh, I think a P comes up, that means prime the auger. And it'll prime the auger by itself without having to turn on the fan and the uh, ignition, to, uh, the hot rod, and that kind of stuff. Um, so that's a really great feature when it's when you first start it. That primes the auger. But if you wanted to clean everything out, clean the auger out and all that stuff, clean out your hopper, vacuum it out, and then redo it, you can prime your auger again. And uh, you can do that without having to start the whole thing up. I like that feature a lot. The other feature I like is the pre uh, or the uh, keep warm setting. I love that setting. You can cook something on here low and slow, and then when it gets done or it's really close to getting done, you can just hit that, and it's going to keep it warm at 165 degrees until you get ready to take it off or get ready to use it. You can use a little bit of the meat, put it back on there, and it'll keep it at 165 degrees. So that's a really cool feature as well. You've got a temp probe right here, a place for a temp probe that you can run in there uh, to probe your meat so you don't have to keep opening 
and closing the lid trying to check internal temperatures. So it's really neat, it's really clean, uh, it's a simple uh, display and I like it a lot. Um, and as far as the temps go, like I say 165 degrees all the way up to 450. But I will tell you that I've seared steaks on this twice already and it'll get up to the mid 460s uh, pretty regular. And um, I mean, it, it does great. And when I talk about searing steaks, I'm gonna show you one of the features that I really like in a minute. That's the cast iron griddle that comes with it. But let's go ahead and dig into the inside a little bit. Now y'all forgive me if it gets a little noisy. We've got flocks of geese flying around here like, like crazy. So they get a little loud every now and then. Uh, but we're gonna open this thing up now and I'm gonna show you the inside of it. I've got everything pulled out so we can start from that way and then start putting things back in. I'll show you the finished product once we get everything back in there. But the latches again, clip latches, and then the inside opens. Now you might be asking right off the bat, well, where do you put the pellets? And that's one thing that I was curious about First too. of all, the hopper's inside everything, which I love. Second of all, I thought, well, this thing's gonna get really hot. But I don't know what this little handle's made out of, uh, but it doesn't get hot at all. You can check it as many times as you want to check it while everything's going, and it's not hot. So it opens up, and there's your hopper. Now, because it's extended above this part, it'll hold eight pounds of pellets, which is the same as the Traeger tailgater will hold, which is pretty amazing, uh, to be honest with you. So I love that part. So if you're used to cooking on a tailgater, this is going to be pretty much the same as far as time goes, except because of the smaller space in here, it's a little bit more efficient than a Traeger tailgater is. So there's your hopper, eight pound hopper. This thing closes down and uh, it's good to go. I love that part about this thing. Um, you've got a divider right here that kind of divides your pellet hopper from the firebox area which I like as well. Um, there's your other louvers in the back and on the side. Um, if you can see right here, you probably won't be able to see, but there's your internal temperature probe right there for, for your controller. Uh, really easy to get to so you can clean it. And now I'm gonna move you over here a little bit farther so you can see more of the inside of the grill. So now the, here's the ear internal part. Um, and again, I've used this probably seven or eight times by now, so that's why it looks a little bit used, but it is used. That's what a smoker's supposed to look like. Um, there's your port for your grease trap. I'll show you that here in a minute. This is a little support for your heat shield and your drip pan. Uh, I'll show you that when I put it in. And obviously, uh, this is your fire pot with your holes for your fan, and your auger tube is right there with your hot rod. Um, other than that, everything is really self-explanatory, really neat, clean, uh, not a whole lot of moving parts or anything like th that to uh, put up with, rattle around when you're transporting it and that kind of thing. So now, let me show you the drip pan and uh, heat shield combination and how that goes in. So now here's your heat shield and your drip pan is a combination. If you can see on the bottom, uh, Let's see if you can see on the bottom they've integrated the heat plate the heat deflector on the bottom of the drip pan which I think is pretty pretty cool um, there's where your grease can hangs off of right there and then there's your support so I like lining my drip pans with tin foil and that's what I've done with this one so that just slides right through the back slide it down in there Make sure the foil is straight and make sure it slid all the way to the back. There's two tabs right there that slide up against the back wall and that lets you know that it's in there properly. And there is your heat shield and your drip tray. Now your grease can, it comes with a grease can and that's gonna hook on the back of your uh, drip tray spout that comes out the back. So I'll, uh, hook that up now it's got two little tabs that it hangs on and there you go now let's talk about the grill grate here's your grill grate that goes right on top 
just like so fits perfectly and as you can see you know i've got a i don't have a huge ham but it's a decent size for a, a small ribeye something like that so you could probably get four of those on here maybe six burgers something like that a small uh roast i've done a chuck roast on here already a uh, a small little maybe a boneless pork butt or even a bone-in pork butt but it would have to be a small one but you could do that on here a uh, whole chicken you could do on here um, and because of the height of the cover you can do things like whole chickens and that kind of stuff on here really like that as well as far as searing goes you've got this grill grate and it also comes with a Traeger cast iron griddle which I love. Now I've already seared steaks on it with this griddle um, and we've also done breakfast on here already. Uh, it will hold a whole pack of bacon going this way all the way across uh, but this thing does fantastic. I love this part and when you're talking about camping and things like that one of my favorite things to do when we're camping is cooking breakfast and this thing is perfect for that. Now I will tell you as far as searing steaks go I've done it on this but I also happen to already have a couple of sets of grill grates and these sets of grill grates right here and you know they are used I just seared steaks in them last night but those fit perfectly on here now I would remove the cast iron uh, griddle obviously and these will sit right on your grill grates but kicking this thing up to 450 degrees as I said it gets up to 460 ish mid 460s this thing is perfect for searing steaks and I love it perfect sear marks every single time and I love it about this now a couple of things that I will tell you these clips that are on here for the lid this one not so much but I will tell you something to be aware of this one right here gets hot and I mean it gets really hot so you need to be careful of that and this part of the grill itself because it's right behind the firebox or right in front of the firebox this thing gets really hot as well so you need to be careful about that or if you have kids in the area as well you need to be mindful of that um, when you got this thing fired up because it does get pretty warm uh, right here on this side of the grill um, other than that it's got nice legs on the bottom gives you plenty of space up under here I've got wood on here right now just because of my table covering i didn't want to mess it up um but man i love it uh i couldn't be happier with it and to be honest with you i like it um i think i like it better than this tailgater over here i really do um same controllers this the new tailgater over here has the same controller as this one now which i like both of them uh when the screen is lit up like this and it's blinking that means you've got power uh, all you have to do is touch the center button and you can change the uh, temperatures from there hit ignite and it starts up um, pretty quiet also I mean I'm you know six inches a foot away from it and um, I mean I just love it anytime that we get an excuse to fire this thing up I, I like to come out here and fire it up because it's just simple easy to clean uh, easy to maintain uh, doesn't use a whole lot of pellets and uh, I just love it and I got to be honest with you I like it better than the tailgater there's no legs to have to argue with and fuss with um, tighten up the, the top pick it up put it in your vehicle and rock on and I love it um, and there's nothing like smelling that smoke on startup I love it so I'll put some links in the description box uh, for the Traeger Ranger as well as some the grill grates that fit it in case you're uh, interested in that but I will tell you that if you're going to get one of these having those two grill grates there's there's two of them that I've got hooked together uh, man you're talking about taking this to another level when you go to see your stuff it's amazing so the first time that I seared steaks I reverse seared them so I smoked them for a little while until they got to about 115 degrees 
took them off, then kicked the temperature up. And again, because it's so small, it gets up to temperature pretty quickly. And then put them on here and uh, reverse sear them, seared them off. Uh, my mother and father-in-law, they brought some steaks over here the other night and uh, asked me if I would cook those. And I thought, well, I'll just throw them on here. They like their steaks medium rare and they were kind of thin steaks. So I just fired it on up to 450 degrees, let it get good and hot with the grill grates. And I seared them and you're talking about the most perfect textbook grill grate marks on steaks on both sides. One minute, turn it, one minute, turn it, flip it over. One minute again, one minute again, and four, maybe five minutes. And the steaks were medium rare, perfectly done. And they were so good that last night they brought two, uh, uh, actually four more steaks over and uh, asked me to do them again. So they've had steaks twice this week and both times they came off of this uh, Traeger Ranger. So I love it. Can't say enough about it. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I'll be sure to answer them for you. Uh, I may do a, you know, if you'd like to see me compare this to the Traeger Ranger, let me know. I mean, Traeger Tailgater, I'll do that too. Or maybe have a, a comparison cook or something like that, who knows. Uh, the only limitation with this is making sure that you have enough room to cook whatever it is you want to cook that afternoon on here. Um, but again, we've cooked a whole pack of bacon on here. We've cooked steaks on here. I did a roast on here. Um, I did uh, something very similar to moink balls on here. I think there were 10 really good sized four ounce meatballs on here. They turned out really good. Great smoke ring on those. So, uh, man, that smoke smells great. But that's about it for the uh, Traeger Ranger. Very impressed. Um, I thought I would like it, but I didn't think I would like it as much as I do. Uh, but if you're looking for a tailgater camper type, this would be perfect for campers, especially if you have that underneath uh, storage bin area. This might be absolutely perfect for that. So can't say enough about it. Appreciate you watching. Appreciate your support. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit that thumbs up button. We certainly appreciate that. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you'd like to see. Um, and now we're fixing to throw something on here. So I thank you, and until next time, we'll be fiddling. See you guys.